So in yesterday's video, I showed you how to connect Touch Designer and Bitwig Studio with TD Bitwig. And it seemed like in the comments, a lot of people are actually more interested in how to make visuals for music in Bitwig than controlling Bitwig from uh, Touch Designer. So in today's video, it's about that. We create some kind of visuals inside of uh, Touch Designer. We create also a bit of music inside of Bitwig, and then we try to make it, you know, bit more reactive to the music inside of touch designer using TD Bitwig. So that's the, that's the goal of today. So I'm switching here to uh, Bitwig and we probably want to create something, uh, generative at first. Um, let's say maybe we, uh, create a pulley grid first, um, and then we use the pulley grid to create sounds and then we use touch designer to create some visuals to it. Okay. So these are here, my notes, um, I'm using a quantizer. I'm making some, some, yeah, generic stuff here. Nothing really special. Um, one also there for a step mod, step mod gets, gets randomized. Maybe I use bipolar here first. Yeah, go to zero, then I modulate here the notes, maybe by 20% or something like this. Um, I go down here with the steps to maybe seven, so something uneven. And maybe let's uh, duplicate here this, make this a bit longer. Let's say, yeah, let's go for 16 steps here. And we want to change with, with this one here, we want to change the octaves. And these are pitches. Okay. So this one is a bit slower. This one is faster, 16 notes. Okay. And let's see. BPM 85. Uh, we use a wavetable oscillator here. Uh, we use a nice wavetable, of course. Um, let's go with classy. And maybe we use a sub oscillator here. Um, no pre chord and of course a sample and hold uh, for these, for both of these oscillators. And um, we trigger this uh, the 16 notes and the clock quantizer here. Trigger mode, put this down here. We use this to actually sample and hold this an AD, uh, maybe a mixer in front. Let's bring here the sub and the main oscillator together. Um, yeah, we trigger this. We don't need here the record. We also use the dice module, trigger the dice module and use this to step you through the wavetable at random. Um, we use here sub as a sub oscillator. This looks nice. Maybe some uneven numbers here for the trigger. And let's use a mod delay here at the end and a blend. Blend this together. Use out here. Inside of Xbox, we use, of course, a convolution device and use delay plus. I really like to combine here multiple things in Bitwig, like a convolution, then a delay plus here with a space algorithm, just mix it in a bit. Um, then at the end of delay two, maybe. Um, yeah. And then we go out here. Let's see how this sounds. Yeah, maybe a filter, maybe a low pass at some point. Something like this. And to use another step mod to change uh, the filter frequency.
And we need the octave uh, step mod here. Let's put this in between here. for two that's enough let's put this into a unison mode okay we can also use um, another dice here to modulate the decay time Maybe something to change the loudness. We have some kind of velocity uh, feel. Uh, minus 10. Okay. So now that we have this running, we can use this maybe to. Yeah, create some visuals for it. Okay, so um, in Bitwig itself, in the um, settings here, under controllers, I still have here my touch OSC uh, or touch designer um, extension running. So in touch designer, uh, we have an empty project here. You can scroll out like yesterday. Uh, there's nothing in it. Go back in. So first we want to create some visuals and I want to go for a bit of noise. Um, it looks like this. It gives you basically a random noise texture. What I do most of the times is to change the resolution here to the maximum uh, value of the community edition of Touch Designer, which is uh, 1280 by 720. That's the, that's the maximum resolution. If you want to go higher, then you need to buy the yeah, the professional version. Um, so we have a bit of noise here and then we want to uh, change maybe the seat. Um, period, let's go for eight. Make it really blurry. Uh, harmonics, want to go down maybe to one. That's, that's okay. And then we want to duplicate this, a second one. And here we change the seat have a different outcome and then we can do multiple things we can mix it together with the composite composite um, that's like working like in Photoshop where you have multiple layers right you have this layer and this layer and then you combine these two layers and inside of this uh, comp here you can change the operation how you blend these um, uh, layers together can say add you can say chroma difference here yeah, right uh, or just difference and so on so now when we change basically one layer of noise here let's go to transform say translate which means you basically offset this noise texture in one direction let's go to 10 you can see it changes then here the outcome because you layer different um, areas from this and this noise together and because of the blending mode, you get different outcomes. So this really simple uh, idea. Um, and what we can do now is we can use some Bitwig stuff. Let's say um, Bitwig main to connect it to Bitwig. It's already connected. And we can use Bitwig track to get information from the Bitwig track. When we select here polygrid and instrument. And we want to check here, let's see, um, read audio envelope. You can see we get now here the informations from Bitwig Studio. It's kind of an audio envelope or of, of envelope follower in these regards. So uh, what we want to do is we want to select this. Uh, we could just select here this and then let's, uh, let's say 
go to this noise texture here and just drag this onto translate and say chop reference or export chop uh, something like this and you get this outcome here right um, by the way you can also use this display button here so you see the outcome of this in the background of touch designer which makes it sometimes a bit better to focus on what's going on so now you can see the the sound here of Bitwig uh, kind of defines how this visual look, looks like. It's a super simple, easy setup, right? So we can leave it at that, but we can also remove here the export. Let me see, this is yeah, delete expression. I can say we want to export this first, Hit select. <clears throat> So the select node basically is something where you can select different values from uh, another object. So here, when you create this connection, you can see we have the same values or parameters in here than here. Uh, but you can use here the select and the channel names instead of using the star symbol, which means select all values. You just select track slash um, audio envelope so now we get only this value in here right uh, and the reason for that is because we want to add here another node that it's called math and math does all kinds of uh, operations math operations on this value it's get it gets inside of this um, uh, inspector here so we can define the range uh, map the range from 0, 1, which is currently happening to 0 to 2, maybe. Or we can say we want to pad this here with a 0 negative value. Maybe let's see, we got 4, maybe too much. 2, and then multiply here by 2. So we get higher values. Yeah, something like this. And then we add here a lag to smooth actually the movement. You can see here it's a bit too steppy, but the slack module here makes it really smooth. It's maybe not on point with the modulation, but you get a bit of smoother signal. But we can go down into 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Yeah, something like this. And then we maybe use here, I don't know, Null object um, to use that as an output. You can use that, but maybe you want to add more um, math operations to it later on, so you don't need to um, update basically your reference here, your chop export. So you just use this as an export, and if you want to add some operations, you hook them up in between here, right? So that's the idea. So let's uh, use the noise too. And let's use this here for the translate. Shop reference. So now you see in the background what's happening, but you can influence this a bit here with math and say maybe I want to have higher values. Let's go to five. All right, something like this. Um, then it's a bit too black and white here. <laughs> um, so let's use an out here. Disable this and use this as, as out. So now we can insert here something like a lookup, lookup table. Um, this one basically, this lookup kind of. Yeah, pull this bit down here. Um, this lookup maps basically. Uh, bright and dark areas, uh, what we have here with black and white, of course, to a certain kind of um, table. So it's more like a lookup table. And you can add here maybe a color ramp. Um, oh, let's create here a ramp this way. And you, uh, yeah, put this in here. And now you can define with the ramp here some kind of color setting. So let's say I want to go here to, uh, to blue. Yeah, 
Maybe do we uh, two plaques at the the end? You can add more colors if you want to, of course. Something like this. It depends on what you like, right? So it basically tries to map uh, from the dark areas of this image to the white uh, area of this image. It tries to map basically this ramp to it. Uh, I can also use pictures and stuff like this. You don't need to use a ramp actually. So what we also can do now is we have a lot of options now. We can change the face of the ramp so we can move the offset the ramp here as you can see, right? So it changes the, the mapping basically. Um, so we can also modulate this. And we already used the audio, and audio envelope for that. So what we want to do is we want to use some uh, macros. The only way actually to map something from Bitwig to uh, Touch Design at the moment is using uh, remotes for some reason. I don't know why they, why they did this, but it's, that's how it is. So what we need to do is we need to use here um, um, a new page. Uh, can we actually rename this page here? Maybe use it, we call it touch designer or something like that, right? And then we use a macro here, call this maybe M1. And we can now use the, the pictures here to output the values of this. Now we map a macro here to M1. You can see it's modulated now. Back in uh, Touch Designer, we need a new module and it's it's called a Bitwig Remote Device. So we can drag this in. And we need to select here the device. Uh, let me see. Polygrid is selected and we get here already uh, the value of the pitches basically. So this is this macro. Uh, maybe I put in here a smoothing option. Let me see. So right, the movement is a bit smoother here. So now we get this value here uh, and we can use this for maybe the, um, the face here of the, of the color, right? So uh, we do the same thing here. We use a select. And in this one, we select here R0 slash modulation value. Right. We get this value here. We do the same thing. We add here maybe a lag. And then we put this into, um, uh, what's it now? Yeah. We use this here as a modulator out. So now we go back here to the ramp and say, I want to modify here the face of that chop reference, right? And you can see now um, this uh, remote controls basically the face of the color, which makes it really flashy in the background. <laughs> Maybe I put uh, I need to put some kind of trigger warning uh, when I start the video. Um, so yeah. Okay, to give you some more ideas, here are some more things you can do. Uh, for instance, inside of Bitwig, we use here this dice, I think, or this dice to modify here the wavetable position. So we can use here another macro, call this M2, and let's say I use a modulator out here. I'm gonna modify this, so I know exactly the value of the value of, of the wavetable position here. So I can use this as a remote and then use this inside of uh, touch designer here to actually vary this. It's parameter one. So we uh, select everything here, duplicate this, 
And in here we select parameter one. So we have a different value here than here, right? It's a different remote and so on. So here we have our flashy noise texture. So what we do now is here to use maybe a circle. Um, output resolution is 1280 by 720. We change the circle size to 0, 0, 5 maybe. 0, 0, 5, something like this. And then we use here translate um, transform, sorry. Transform as a scaling option. I mean, you could just do this on here and change the radius, but I usually like to use a transform for some reason. And then use here output of that to uh, scale it maybe. Chop reference. Chop reference. You can see here it's slowly moving in size. And that's the wavetable position, by the way. Uh, so we have a leg in place here and we have, do we have a math? No. So now it becomes handy that we have this output here, right? I can hook some additional modules in between without needing to update here my reference. So that's the math. Uh, range, re-add maybe. Multiply by three. Something like that, maybe more. So we get the circle here. Um, then we could, from this transform, we go into a comp. And we also go into a feedback here. Let's put this over there. So feedback works kind of the same way as in audio. Uh, you play basically stuff into a buffer. Um, here we go on the comp, we go into over. And we want to uh, insert here, it's called level. Put this here, boost opacity. Uh, something like this. Maybe we should also change the uh, position. So let's use here some some random mods inside of Bitwig. Um, it's just a random bar. Maybe sync this. And then use here a macro called M3 macro M4. So we modify this, duplicate this and modify this. Then we map this. Maybe a bit faster, half node. And we use this here for the position um, of the dot. So let's extract these values. The select the device again. Um, this should be parameter two. And this is parameter three. Okay, so with a transform here, use this for the translate, use this for translate up and down. So now we need here to change the math, multiply one, 
multiply one. Maybe the range is too big, 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Let's go back to the level here. And we need to, I think, we need to drag here this one onto that. Yeah. Now we have a real feedback. So we basically, uh, while dragging this on that, we create kind of a feedback loop and in between we have this level. It's exactly working like a reverb or like a um, yeah, delay feedback. And here you can then change the opacity. So we are slightly out of range here all the time. change the range to oh that's the, that's the wrong wrong map in here or oh, minus 0 0.5 this should be better and here also minus 0 0.5 And then when we have this bouncing ball, we mix this together here with our flashy background. Insert comp. Bring this into that. And then we get something like this. Maybe it's better to change here the operation. Add. Burn color. Difference. Maybe make the initial circle a bit smaller. So it's a lot of testing and drying out stuff, what looks good and what looks bad, right? This is way too trippy. <laughs> <clears throat> but I want to give you some ideas, right? I want to show you what's possible. I'm not really a touch designer a professional in any by any stretch. Um, uh, let's see, we can increase here the speed maybe. change the order here. Yeah? Okay, I think that's it for this video. I'm disabling this here. So I tried to show you all the important parts, how to extract here the audio envelope from Bitwig from a track, um, how to extract some remote controls here from Bitwig from a device, then use some math operations to uh, smooth out the signal or prepare it, then how to create some basic visuals here also with feedback how to use noise textures and lookup modules how to use comp modules here and then of course how to use um, these these values coming from bitwig and modifying certain things here inside of our visuals we can also put this into a perform mode here on the top left looks like this and you can let it play alongside your grid patch Maybe in the future we can look into how to make this visual interactive and then also modify at the same time modifying stuff inside of the grid patch so to make it completely reactive um, and pleasant to play with. Okay. Um, so I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you like the video. Um, leave a comment if you have some questions and if you want to see more of this of these kind of tutorials, um, please let me know. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.